When we think about cancer patients that are on chemotherapy, we usually think about how they need to rest. Now, a new study shows that with exercise, the tumor shrinks more than from the chemotherapy alone. Also, the dose of the chemotherapy could potentially even be reduced with the exercise. A really good thing because the side effects of chemotherapy are a huge thing. You know, in general, exercise we know is a valuable thing to extend life, not just for people with cancer, but everybody. The Gerson people actually have an interesting model. They think that because you're sick and you have cancer that you need more rest. But now we've got some data that supports that exercise is really a good thing for whether you have cancer or not. And if a person exercises moderately, say three to five times a week, the physical activity helps to prevent the cancer in the first place, and it reduces the deaths from cancer up to, guess what, 50%. That's a lot. Yeah, lifestyle is a huge factor in getting cancer if you don't have a healthy, healthy lifestyle and of doing worse if you have cancer if you're not fit. But, you know, often people do become very fatigued when they are on chemotherapy. Oh, a lot of people. So would it be good for them to force themselves to exercise or is well, I think it better for them to rest? Everybody's different. You know, each cancer patient... <laughs> has their own story. They're different physically, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually. And a good doctor is one who can individualize treatment, so it's very specific to each patient. One of the things that's coming to my mind is remembering Lance Armstrong riding his bicycle uh -huh. when he was having chemotherapy. Uh -huh. And that just seemed like it would be a really unusual thing. Well, Lance Armstrong is unusual to start with. <laughs> and that's a, that's a really special situation. But for him, see it would be a lot different than somebody else. So but I guess movement can affect your metabolism, so maybe it would get more blood flow to the tumor? Well, maybe. It's hard to increase blood flow to a tumor because mm. the tumor itself has a vascular uh, flow to it. I mean, there's a certain amount of blood vessels that form there. It's called angiogenesis. But those blood vessels are abnormal. They don't have the circulation that a normal uh, tissue does. So it can't respond to different situations, and blood flow is fairly fixed. I suppose if you exercise and you pump your heart rate, if your heart rate was faster, it might pump more blood through everything, including the tumor, too. So that's an interesting point. Well, speaking of the heart, uh, one of the common chemotherapy agents is adriamycin, mm -hmm. and that does affect your heart. Absolutely, it can. And that's where a study was done at the University of Pennsylvania, in September of this of this year, 2014, in the American Journal of Physiology. And what they did is they took mice with mel and injected them with melanoma cells. And what they were trying to do is find out if these mice would do better if they exercised during the adriamycin treatment uh, or not. And what they found, to their surprise, was is the exercise did not improve their outcome, but they found that at least from the point of view of exercise, but what it did do is it shrunk the tumors because those mice that just exercised didn't have any benefit. But those that were in adriamycin as well, there was a big difference in how fast and how fully the tumors resorbed. But if you exercise before the chemotherapy, yes, that it has protects a value. your heart. Yes, and adriamycin is kind of a tricky drug because what it does is it interferes with the mitochondria, which is the energy packets in the cell that makes energy. It interferes with that. And that's why you would think that exercise or certain things that boost mitochondrial activity might be good. And there was a lot of study done on coenzyme Q10, which is a, myocard which is a, a mitochondrial stimulant. And there was early data to suggest that if you were on a drug like adriamycin and you took coenzyme Q10, that it would block the cardiac effects of it. But there have been a few large studies that have not ha, not shown that. Yet at the same time, there's nothing wrong. There's no harm from taking a little CoQ10, and who knows, maybe it would be of some value. Well, you know, exercise is recommended not just for physical your physical condition, but also for your psychological well-being. Oh, for sure. And that would especially, I would think, be helpful for patients that had cancer. And we also know that, that lifestyle is sometimes more powerful than chemo, radiation, and surgery. Absolutely. And, um, and when you're looking at stage four cancers, the, the five-year survival rate is in the range of 2%. Uh, it, and that's really not very good. 
anything you add that will build on that is a good idea. And exercise is one of the things that probably has more of an effect than chemotherapy. And, of course, it's not toxic, and you don't have all those side effects yeah. as well. Well, you know, exercise needs to be promoted across the board anyway, but especially in people that have cancer and people that are undergoing the chemotherapy, the, the oncologists should be recommending this to their patients. Exactly. So if exercise is going to potentiate some chemotherapy agents, and it's good on its own if it's done prior to the time that you're being treated for the cancer, or even if you have cancer in some studies, that's a good thing. There were some studies that were done that supported this, Vicki, that I think are really interesting. One was done in the Journal of American Medical Association in the year 2005, and they showed, as you were mentioning, three to five hours a week, walking at two to three miles an hour decreased the death rate by 50% in women who had hormone-sensitive breast cancers. That's a big thing. And then again, this year, another study came out from the University of Chicago showing that if you could burn 12,000 calories a week, that you would have about a 50% less chance of dying from How your cancer. How much exercise is 12,000? Well, if you walk, a 175-pound man walks uh, briskly for a half an hour every day, he burns 4,200 calories a week. So if you jogged or rode your bike or played tennis, it's not too hard to get to 12,000. And if you get a 48% decrease in mortality, that's, that's noteworthy. So lifestyle, diet, exercise, stress, sleep, are all huge factors that have a lot to do with how we're going to do, either in not getting cancer or if you have it, doing it.